I grew up in a devout Muslim home. Uh, it was a very dysfunctional home with a lot of uh, sexual, mental, emotional, physical abuse. I believed in jihad. I mean, my 12-year-old dream to become a suicide bomber. We were pressed on every side Full of fear and troubled thoughts For good reason we carried heavy hearts Ishik Abla was miserable. She thought that dying would be better than living. But an encounter with God completely changed her mind and her life. Ishik is our guest on this episode of GPS, God, People, Stories. I'm Phil Fleischman. And I'm Jim Kirkland. After Ishik tells us about the hope she found, she's going to talk about the platform she has today. It lets her share the love of Jesus on TV and online with millions of people. And then you will hear a word from Billy Graham on telling others about Christ. If we really believe that men are lost apart from Jesus Christ, it should become a burning incentive to evangelize with zeal and passion. Do you have a passion for sharing your faith? Or would you like to learn more about what it means to be in a relationship with Jesus Christ? Either question, we're here to help. Just visit findpeacewithgod.net. That's findpeacewithgod.net. And also, you can reach out to us directly by email. Our address is gps at billygram.org. That's gps at billygram.org. We recently heard from Cesar, who lives in Singapore. He listens to GPS when he goes for walks, and he said it's so refreshing and encouraging listening to every testimony. We appreciate that, Cesar. GPS. God. People. Stories. Ishik Abla is from Istanbul, Turkey. I grew up in a devout Muslim home. Uh, It was a very dysfunctional home with a lot of uh, sexual, mental, emotional, physical abuse. I grew up during the Civil War years. So there was a lot of turmoil and violence in my surroundings. I mean, I was beaten up on the floor. It, there was no disciplining or parenting style in my family. I would be kicked on the floors. Um, I had a relative that regularly abused, sexually abused me, molested me. And later on, I learned that my parents knew about that. And uh, what they didn't protect me. So, but there was so mu- a lot of legalism and fear-based uh, teachings of Islam, and also having a false identity about God. That it, he was a God that was impersonal. Uh, he was a dictator, and he always ready to punish when you make any mistakes. There was no love, no grace. I didn't literally know the word in my language, grace. I didn't know what grace meant at all. Because of everything Ishik went through, she looked for meaning and purpose. And she found it in a radical form of Islam. I believed in jihad. I mean, my 12-year-old dream to become a suicide bomber. But you got to understand, when you are already growing up in a environment that feels like hell and Islam is offering if you die in the name of Allah you are going to immediately go to paradise so becoming a suicide bomber was an easy fix for me that I could die in the name of Allah and I could be accepted by him and go to paradise so nothing else is offering you that kind of uh, reward and I would choose that one when my life was miserable Ishik never lived out her dream of becoming a suicide bomber, even though as she grew up, her life continued to be miserable. I got married first time when I was a teenager to a radical Muslim guy and who also continued to abuse me, physically beating me up, spitting on me, slap, you know, slapping me in public, uh, just by me saying thank you to a man or, or a waiter. I would get beaten up for that. I, I was not allowed to look, look to a man in the eye. After a few years, a friend helped Ishik file for divorce. She fled to the U.S., specifically Florida. She was hoping that a new country could rid her of her old problems. That is not what happened, though. Wherever you go, there you are. I was with the same mon- mindset in a different environment because I thought if I came to America, it's a free country, and a lot of things can change for me. But my inner person was the same. 
So I came to America with with a Muslim mentality, angry, hateful, in depression, suicidal. So um, I this time I met another guy who was a drug dealer and a drug abuser, and I got married to him. I had a child with him, and I was stuck in another abusive relationship. Dreams dashed on a rocky shore. And the plans I had made came crashing to the floor. Heartbreak on this winding road. And the pieces I had gathered couldn't heal up on their own. As with her first marriage, Ishik eventually got a divorce from her second abusive husband. But that still didn't take away her pain and her anger and depression. In fact, thoughts of suicide began to consume Ishik once again. One morning I woke up, I was divorced twice, 28 years old, and failed in every area of her life, including parenting. So I had a a two-and-a-half-year-old girl, almost three-years-old girl, sleeping next to me. That morning I woke up and I said to myself, maybe enemy was, of course, speaking to me, life is not worth living. It's better for you to be dead than alive. Anybody can be a better mother to your child. So I was hearing all these lies and I started believing them. And my pain, emotional pain was so severe, I wanted to end my life. So I told myself I I would take my daughter to daycare and then I would go to work and plan something. And I started planning flying my car from a bridge and so it would look like an accident and my daughter wouldn't have a legacy of her mother committed suicide but die in an accident so that was my plan when ishik arrived at work she went to the restroom for one final conversation with her god and i started weeping like having my last um closure with allah so i started telling asking him why do you hate me so much why have you abandoning me? Why, what have I done so bad to deserve this life? And of course, there was no answer. As Ishik returned to her desk, her boss called her into his office. Now, it's important for you to note two things here. First, Ishik's boss was a follower of Jesus. Second, he had been witnessing to Ishik since she started working there. My boss called me to his office. And he said, please close the door and have a seat. Ushuk, I know this is going to sound very weird to you, and I have never done it before. But my Lord Jesus just spoke to me that he heard your prayer in the restroom. He wants me to tell you, you are not forsaken nor abandoned. You are so loved and cared by him that he loves you unconditionally. And he wants me to tell you, if you accept him as your Lord and Savior into your heart, He's going to change everything. And yes, would you like to accept him into your heart? And I was like, yes. I was just crying and saying yes, yes, and weeping on the floor. Immediately I felt all the weight was lifted off my shoulders. I had a heart transplant. Like that suicidal woman who was depressed all her life was gone. Grass looked green and sky looked blue and I wanted to run on the streets and hug and kiss everybody. I I was full of joy and I could not explain what happened. It was supernatural. I got touched by God and that changed everything. Ishik says that Christ took away a lot of garbage that had piled up in her life. And that was only the beginning. God still had to work in my life in a a lot of ways about my personal identity in Christ. I had to be very intentional 
in my walk with Jesus, for allowing him to cleanse me more. Because imagine first 28 years of my life, I was steadily fed with lies and deception about myself, about life, about God, about other people. I had my own Islamic philosophy about everything. And that was deeply rooted in my DNA almost. But Ishik was eager to replace her Islamic philosophy with the truth of Jesus Christ. I was very open to counseling, deliverance, you know, Christian therapies. So I immediately started going to church. I didn't know the word of God. My first church experience, even amazing. I mean, God touched me more because I told Jesus, I want you to use me. And then I started going to Bible schools, even going to Masters in Divinity later on. But I had this great hunger for the Word of God. And not only that, even the time that I didn't know anything about the Bible, Word of God, I was giving my testimony to everybody. Listen, Jesus saved my life. I was suicidal. He changed my life. I I don't, like the blind man said, I was blind. Now I see. I didn't know any doctrine, theology. I was not part of any denomination or anything. But I could tell people, Jesus saved my life. So God took me from glory to glory, faith to faith, and started still working in my heart and issues. And giving me more freedom and joy. While Ishik was growing in her faith, she was also climbing the corporate ladder. Eventually, Ishik became a high-level executive at the North American offices of a European company. I started holding Bible studies when I was a CEO, and I started seeing the people getting saved at workplace, just like what happened to me. At the same time, I was having a full-time job and I was still ministering and going out and preaching the gospel. Um, I was at a choir, singing in the choir, and I was ushering. I was working in the street ministry. I mean, you just name the ministries I was working. And then um, I met a Christian man who had a prison ministry. Uh, it was five years into my salvation when God made me so secure in my identity and in my um, singlehood, God brought someone wonderful who raised my daughter also um, and provided that Christian environment for us. So we got married and we started doing a street ministry together. And still I was going to churches and giving my testimony. A missionary heard about me um, and came and listened to me connected me with a TV ministry. Later on, they came and they asked me, would you like to preach the gospel to your people, to the Muslim world? Ishik was reluctant at first. She hadn't really ever thought about being on TV, and she admits that she didn't feel a strong calling to go back to Muslim nations and preach about Jesus. But Ishik kept considering the idea. It wouldn't go away. And two years after she was first approached about going on TV, she began to feel that God was calling her to do it. I started doing satellite TV broadcasts, and then I was taping programs, and those programs being aired. Um, I was doing it part-time. Then those programs I taped became so popular in the Muslim nations, especially in Turkey, I was offered to do it full-time. And then I started having a live show, call-in program to Turkey, to Iran, and to to Europe for the Muslims that live in Europe. So they, they call the program, basically, and they ask questions. Sometimes they cuss. Sometimes they, are, they, they give their two cents, and then sometimes they give their lives to Jesus. Now they are giving so many of them on live, brought, during the live broadcast on air. They give their lives to Jesus. Ishik has been on the air since 2009, and she says that millions of people have watched her in the last decade. Today, her TV programs can be seen in over 150 countries and in languages like Turkish, Arabic, and Farsi. Ishik also has a huge presence on Facebook, over 5 million followers. She uses social media to teach people all around the world about Christ. I do uh, a lot of Facebook Live, YouTube Live, places that you cannot bring Bible in. 
people follow my programs and give their lives to Jesus. And sometimes one broadcast, I receive 1,000 messages, 30 to 90,000 messages a month. People are hungry in the Muslim world, despite of everything we see on the news. They are Muslims are coming to Christ. We asked Ishik if she ever imagined preaching to millions on TV. Never. I was a, a Muslim woman with no voice. <laughs> and now I have a voice. And God is using that voice as his. So it is only glory of God that he's able to do that. Like in First Corinthians, first chapter says, God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. I am one of those foolish things. <laughs> One of the major themes of Ishik's ministry came from her own life experience, and that is God's love for us. I was never loved. I never felt love before. But if I describe love, I will describe Jesus. And his love makes everything right, everything perfect. And we are very imperfect, but his love just changes entire cursed world equation for us and there's no other way so that made a huge difference in my life to walk with him in a love relationship than a religious relationship Ishik Abla discovered God's love, and it changed her life. Surrendering to Jesus brought her true peace, joy, and forgiveness, the things she'd always been searching for. Jesus said, seek and you will find. That means that if you are searching for answers, if you're lost and don't know what to do, you can ask God to reveal himself to you, and he will You can learn more about this at findpeacewithgod.net, findpeacewithgod.net. In just a minute, Ishik is going to tell us about a man she saw on TV, and she described him by saying, mark my words, this guy is going to be a very famous evangelist. You're going to find out who that man is. You're listening to GPS, God, People, Stories a podcast production of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. If we really believe that men are lost apart from Jesus Christ, it should become a burning incentive to evangelize with zeal and passion. Billy Graham. Evangelism is the proclamation of the historical, biblical Christ as Savior and Lord, persuading people to come to Him personally and be reconciled to God. For we cannot stop speaking of what we ourselves have heard and seen. Our goal is nothing less than the penetration of the whole world. Jesus said this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached throughout the world. The evangelization of the world does not mean that all men will respond, but that all men will be given an opportunity to hear. We're seeing in the Middle East with the right approach, they can be reached. Never have we had more efficient instruments in our hands to help us gather the harvest. We try to use a multiplicity of methods in our crusades. The Holy Spirit can take any method and use it to win souls. Would you like to know more about sharing your faith in Christ, about winning souls, as Billy Graham put it? Well, go to this website, findpeacewithgod.net. That's findpeacewithgod.net. Our guest on this episode of GPS has been Ishik Abla. After she became a believer in Jesus Christ, she had an incredible hunger to learn everything she could about Christianity. And that hunger led to watching a lot of Christian TV. So one Saturday night, I turned on the Christian channel, and there was this guy preaching the gospel so passionately. And so because I was not churched, everything is new to me. And I didn't know Christianity, right? So I didn't know I was saved already. I gave my life to Jesus. I was thinking I need to get saved all the time. So he made an altar call at the end of his message. 
and with it just as I am him became my most favorite because I was just weeping when I, at that moment so I ran towards the tv and I went on my knees and I gave my life to Jesus following his prayer and then I called my girlfriend and I said listen I watched this guy on tv mark my words this guy is going to be a very famous evangelist in the world <laughs> so she says who is he and I said, his name is Billy Graham. She said, my grandfather got saved at his crusade. <laughs> he's, so, he's already so well known. I'm like, oh, really? He's really awesome. So six months, every time I watch Billy Graham, I went on my knees and I gave my life to Jesus all over again. <laughs> Until one day my pastor said, Ushuk, you don't need to keep giving your life to Jesus, which is, you know, God honors your childlike faith. But you're already saved. But from that day on, I watched all Billy Graham's preaching. And I would even use my hands like when I was first started going on the pulpit, taking the Bible one hand, the other hand, like addressing the audience. So he was my role model entire time. I really, God really reused Billy Graham in my life, shaping me and shaping my ministry as an evangelical ministry. So so I I cannot tell you enough how much I appreciated him and still appreciate him. Well, that evangelist that Ishik discovered definitely made a strong impression upon her. <laughs> what a cool story. We really appreciate the fact that Ishik shared it with us, along with the rest of her testimony of how God has been so faithful in her life. Yeah, we'd like to thank Laura Story and Sarah Groves for the use of some of their music in this episode. And of course, a big thanks to you for listening. If this podcast has been something you enjoy listening to, would you share it with a friend or someone in your family? And also, don't forget, you can reach out to us directly by emailing us at gps at billygram.org. Again, that's gps at billygram.org. I'm Phil Fleischman. And I am Jim Kirkland. GPS God People Stories is an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Always good news. You've-